Hi, I'm Irving. You have just entered Cartertopia. The Amazons are holding a tournament to see who will take Steve Trevor, an injured Air Force pilot, back to the United States. It's come down to these two. The mystery woman has just had her turn at the bullets and bracelets. Now it's the other girl's turn. And that's that. We have our winner. This is the golden belt. It is the symbol of Amazon supremacy. So long as you wear it, you will retain your cunning and strength away from Paradise Island. I would mention that it's a chastity belt, but you aren't supposed to know what that is or what it's for. So we'll go with the cunning and strength thing. She gives her the magic lasso that makes people tell the truth, and then Diana reveals herself. I'm sorry, Mother, but it was the only way. I would have expected nothing less from my own daughter. By the way, you're grounded for a month. The other girl will do the mission. The colors were chosen to show your allegiance to freedom and democracy. Hold on. If she's such a big believer in democracy, why is she a queen and her word is law? The skirt can be discarded if it should prove cumbersome. The material is indestructible. Oh, it's beautiful, Mother. Thank you. I designed it myself. Here's another question. If Hippolyta is so dead set against men and always has been, how'd she get a daughter? By mail order? The invisible plane is waiting. The American is already aboard. Here's more of that technological disconnect. Invisible plane? How? Why? What does it run on? Did they build it? With what? What do they do with it if nobody ever leaves the island? We don't get any answers. We just accept that magic is a real thing on this island, and they know how to use it to make guns and invisible planes, the two most practical items in the world. Go in peace, my daughter. And remember that in the world of ordinary mortals, you are a wonder woman. Name drop. They take off in the invisible plane. I see how they did it. They made it out of glass, engines and all. Dreaming. No, you're not. I must have died and gone to heaven. Two wrong, one guess left. I'm sure his next guess is going to be I'm in an invisible plane being piloted by an immortal Amazon who has the hots for me. I mean, if he's not dreaming and he's not in heaven, what else is left? The last thing I remember was. Shot coming down on my parachute. Shh. Relax. We'll be landing soon. Take your time. I'm in no hurry to leave this, whatever it is. She lands and brings him to the hospital. Can I help you, please? Yes. I would like to get this patient admitted. I just fill out these forms and triplicate. You don't understand. He's quite ill and needs immediate attention. Thank you. Hey. This is Major Steve Trevor. He's very ill. Major Steve Trevor? But he's dead. Who are you? I'm his personal nurse. Take good care of him. I'm going to leave my patient in your hands. Thank you. I'm starting to think we should all do that when we have to go to the hospital or take someone to the hospital. Blow past the bean counters and get to the people who can help. It sure worked for her. We get some scenes of Diana taking an American culture a la 1942 with the usual jokes about her not knowing what money is and all that. Then she comes upon a robbery in progress. 
Excuse me, but that's very rude. Get out of here, broad. It's also dangerous. Shoot her, Nunzio. Me? I never shot a woman before, except in self-defense. The police arrive and start trying to sort out what happened. Okay. Suppose we start with your name. Wonder Woman. Sure. That's the last name, Woman. First name, Wonder, right? Hey, Mike, the guy in the back of the truck, he's starting to stir. Stay right where you are, Wonder. You caught the robber, save the money. You're going to have to fill out forms. We're going to need your statement. They steal money, and I have to fill out forms. What a country this is. You have no idea, kid. Meanwhile, a theatrical agent named Ashley Norman, played by Red Buttons, is watching and wants to sign her as a daredevil act. She's starting to grasp that she needs money to get around in this society, so she's considering it. And what do you get out of this? 50%, sweetheart. Half the money? But I'm the one that's getting shot at. That show business. She ponders it for the rest of the day, checks in on Steve, and finally gives Ashley Norman a call and says, Okay, you're my agent. What do I do? He books a theater and arranges a show to take place right after the story of how she thwarted that bank robbery hits the newsstands. The place is packed with people, including Marcia and a friend. Ashley demonstrates that the gun and bullets are real, then asks for volunteers to come up and shoot at Wonder Woman. Big hand. Ice big hand. Who else? Who else? Do we have a third? Oh no, where am I? <laughs> a woman, a woman, let's hear it. Thank you, man. Green. The different people take turns firing different weapons at Wonder Woman and she repels them all. Then Marsh's friend steps up. I have a gun that I have fired and I am comfortable with. I may use it. Anything that makes you comfortable, go <laughs> right ahead. <laughs> She's comfortable with that little gun that she, hey. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The only firearm Granny is comfortable with is a 45 caliber Thompson submachine gun with a 100 round magazine. Right. Norman balks, but Wonder Woman says go ahead. exactly what Granny or Marsha was expecting. In Berlin, Herr Oberst is leaving on his mission while his good friend Nicholas sends another pigeon to let the Allies know what's going on. Meanwhile, Diana has learned that Steve Trevor is awake and talking, so she tells Ashley she's done. He has a fit, but she's adamant. Excuse me, Mr. Norman, but that's my money, too. Whoops. How, how, how right you are. How right you are. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just leave it here. You take your half, leave me the rest. I trust you. Too bad she can't say the same thing about him. He just saw her act and he... Really? I can avoid that bullet faster than you can shoot, Mr. Norman. Ashley Norman, you are certainly one man who is not to be trusted. Please, don't... Don't hurt me. Hurt you? Where I'm from, we try never to hurt people. Goodbye. One thing you have to love is how calm and blasé she is about all this stuff. You are certainly not someone to be trusted. Shame on you. Somebody needs a time out. Hello, Marsha. This is Carla. I tried everything I could to stop her, but it didn't work. Okay, okay, so I failed. You want me to follow her? Oh, left Argentina ready? Okay, I'll wait at the apartment. Of course he is. Everybody around her and Steve is a spy. Marsh is a spy. Ashley's a spy. The General's a spy. The lead dog in the canine corps is a spy. Diana doesn't care. She needs to talk to Steve. Steve is talking to the General. They know that Herr Oberst has already left Argentina on his way to the U.S. They sort out that it must be more than an average bombing raid and figure out that he's after the place where the Norden bomb site is being manufactured. 
Steve says, gas up my new plane, I'm on my way and I'm not taking no for an answer. He tells Marsha that he'll take a cab to the airfield and tells her which route he'll take. Hi. What seems to be the problem? Stay right where you are, flyboy. Oh. That is a problem. The cabbie jumps back in his car and takes off, leaving Trevor alone with his kidnappers. I'm hoping this little coincidence will help him realize that Marsh is a spy, but in a show like this, there's no telling. He's still weak from his injuries, and they recapture him. Diana discovers he's gone from the hospital and decides to take drastic action. I'm guessing that works on the same principle as the automatic costume changer on the bat poles. In Marsha's apartment, they have Steve tied up and blindfolded. He knows the combination to the safe where the bomb site plans are kept, but they're going to have to use truth serum to get it out of him. She says, I spent five years gaining his confidence, so under the drug he'll tell me. If I'm not back by midnight, kill him. If I am, we'll take him with us to our U-boat rendezvous at 1 a.m. They shoot him up and start the questioning. We get into the safe in your office now, Steve. Important? Eh? That's right. Just give me the combination and I'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Secret. She may have overestimated her influence on him, but eventually she gets it out of him and heads to his office to steal the plans. you all the time. You didn't know anything. Well, I knew that you had a friend who carried a machine gun in her purse. And you won't get away with whatever you're doing. I was Nuremberg Judo Champ! I assume that that is supposed to impress me. I think I just found a new line for myself. Marsha is more of a handful than Diana anticipated, but eventually Amazon's strength prevails. Diana puts the magic lasso on her and starts asking questions. Where is Steve Trevor? Mm. Mm. My apartment. 20, 2809 West 20th Street, Chevy Chase. Is he all right? <laughs> Until midnight. If I'm not there by then, he'll be killed. Diana says, it's over, Marsha. You've lost. You may have me. But the Third Reich will never be through. It will go on a thousand years. I heard the Greeks and the Romans say the same thing. You heard that? I like the gags in this show. For the most part, they're very subtle and understated like that one. That may well be one of the best lines in the whole episode, and it's almost a passing remark. Very well done. Now, what number do I call on this instrument to reach your apartment? Capital. 6732. <clears throat> We'll get even with you for this. My people will send more agents. This is Marsha. The plans have been changed. I'll be there an hour later. What about the rendezvous with the submarine? Advise them of the alteration. No! That buys Steve more time. Cut to the skies, much too close to the Brooklyn Naval Yard. Coming from Blasco. Calling from Blasco. Robot 23 calling. You were ordered to maintain radio silence. Plans changed. The estimated time of departure now 0 to 100 hours. That's 2 a.m. Nay! Nay! While he's having that conversation, Diana is flying out to intercept him in the invisible plane. Why didn't she just force him down to the ground? Why is she doing it this way? No one can stop this mission. 
least of all, a woman. Oh boy, he stepped in it now. You obviously have little regard for womanhood. You must learn respect. I prefer not to soil my hands on female flesh. But if you insist... Super duper flying ace has a glass jaw. Marsha took Diana's punches a lot better than that. But women are inferior, don't you know? Yeah. We have you approaching the Brooklyn Navy Yard. What is your position? 32 miles due east of Long Island. Latitude 40, 45, 06. Longitude 73, 59, 39. Take a wild guess what she's going to do with that information. from we try never to hurt people once that's done she returns to washington you again this man is a top nazi spy put him in a cell and throw away the key you just can't just dump a spy and walk away like that you've got to come into the station house and fill out some reports good night gentlemen they still don't get it when you're wonder woman you don't do paperwork if you ding dang don't feel like doing paperwork Back at the apartment, Ashley and the others are in a panic because they can't raise the sub on the radio. They decide, forget Marsha's instructions, we'll kill Trevor now and get out of here. So, Mr. Norman, my old friend the agent, we meet again. You have to love Norman's expression. She mops him up, releases Steve, tells him about Marsha and all the rest, and then it's time to go. Wait a minute. You can't just keep walking in and out of my life like this. Who are you? Where are you from? How are you able to do it? We'll be together again. Soon. Somehow. And then she's gone like a thing that was there and then isn't. At least I've learned one good thing. From now on, I'm going to have an ordinary looking secretary. Because, of course, it was Marsh's fault he couldn't control his hormones. Well, I anticipated the way you'd feel, Steve, so I personally interviewed 15 prospective secretaries. The one I chose was a Navy wave who scored highest in all the office aptitude tests, but she's duller than a fat lap dog after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Take a guess who it is. Uh, Major Trevor, this is the Yeoman First Class, Dana Prince. Nice to meet you, Dana. Major? Uh, no rank around here. Let's just make it Steve and Diana, all right? Thank you, Steve. Good. So you take Linda Carter, pin her hair back, put glasses on her, and put her in a uniform, and that makes her plainer than a lap dog after dinner. As if! She's every bit as gorgeous in that getup as she is in the Wonder Woman outfit or that negligee type thing she was wearing at the beginning. Linda Carter is a beautiful woman. And unless you want to cover her with warts and pull out all but one of her teeth, she's going to stay that way no matter how you dress her. It's mind-boggling that Steve can't recognize her facial features because of a change of hair and a pair of glasses. Then again, it worked for Clark Kent, so I guess it can work for her, too. As a kid in my teens, I was a Marvel guy, so I didn't know too much about most of the DC characters. I'd read a little bit of Wonder Woman, but not enough to really get a feel for what she was all about. So I went into this show at the age of 22 with a fairly open mind. I did expect a lot more campy stuff all of Batman, but I wasn't disappointed. This is a strong pilot. We get what we need of Diana's background, at least what we need for the moment. We get a solid feel for the setting with the World War II backdrop. We have a good idea who Steve is, what he's about, and what his strengths and weaknesses are. It's very well written with the information kept tight and interesting. We didn't really spend a lot of time exploiting the eye candy aspect of Wonder Woman, which was a breath of fresh air. She spends as much time in regular clothes as she does in her Amazon outfit, which forces us to focus on the person and what she's doing. The plot was complex, but not confusing. Everything in the sequence of events is believable if you start with the assumption that there is such a thing as some kind of magic that the Amazons have discovered and know how to control. That aspect isn't overdone. If anything, it's underdone. It's a conclusion we have to draw for ourselves because it's never explicitly stated. The viewer gets to engage their brain and fill in some of the gaps that our writers know the brain can fill. 
It's a satisfying experience reviewing writing this good. We've established our setting and our characters and our overall conflict. The next question, can we keep up the level of quality? There's only one way to find out. Join me next time here in Cartertopia. I assume that that is supposed to impress me.